And we are joined now by Michael Dorsey. He is the co-founder and vice president of the strategy of the U.S. Climate Plan, as well as director of the Center, of the Center for Environmental Health. It's a real pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. Susan, thanks for having me. Tell us how the carbon emissions trading system works. Well, basically, the system is fairly straightforward. It, basically, you get uh, emitters or polluters to set a cap on you know, their emissions. The government controls that cap. Uh, and then there are extended uh, allowances to trade uh, whether or not they're going to make the, the targets or not, or whether they're going to be above or below. They can trade and buy and sell those allowances to, to essentially it's a right to pollute. Uh, so it's a fairly regulated market. The government controls the cap on the process and regulates those polluters that are involved in the process. And the polluters have the uh, option or the ability to buy and sell uh, the rights uh, to pollute, essentially the emissions allowances. Is it working? Well, right now, globally, it's certainly not. Uh, the European Union started off first. Uh, they led the initiative almost a, a, a generation ago in the early knots, uh, starting in the late 90s. They began to assemble the process. Uh, many uh, jurisdictions, particularly California and Canada and others, followed suit. Uh, what we've seen is a sustained, suppressed low price in the trading systems in the formal regulated uh, markets like in Europe. Um, that, that price uh, signal hasn't really been there in a robust enough manner. And oddly enough, China is picking the price to begin trading around $10 uh, a, a credit. Um, that was the same uh, beginning point for Europe uh, you know, almost 20 years ago. Well, it seems like you know, China has really taken the lead on this. The U.S. has taken a big step back. How do we come together as a global community to work on this? Well, right now is a really a special moment, I think, for China. You're absolutely right. China is surging ahead and leading not just in, in the region and Asia, but really globally. And that's critical and important. But really, where we start at this moment is so important. We can't start with uh, the, the benchmarks of a generation ago, of 20-odd years ago. We've got to start more ambitiously. The China targets you know, to reduce emissions by about a quarter or so by 2030. Most of the world is on course to go to 100% renewable energy by 2030. We've got over 50 uh, cities in the U United States that are, have that target enshrined in policy and in regulations. Uh, we've got really ambitious initiatives. So really, the price needs to be higher in China if it's really going to be successful to get out ahead. Uh, the ambition needs to be catalyzed and injected into the process if they're going to really truly lead the world. The question is, are we going to have a mediocre beginning, or are we going to have an ambitious beginning? Right now, we've got a mediocre one. So as the rest of the world moves ahead and the U.S. stands at a standstill, really, what kind of pressure is the U.S. facing? Well, the US, I think it's facing tremendous pressure. The reality is, is that even though China is starting from a mediocre point, uh, it surging ahead, and really with a market that's double the European, the, the currently the world's largest marketplace, is, is significant. But again, being middle of the class in a class that's lackluster uh, isn't all that impressive, let's be honest. Uh, so the challenge really is, is first, how, is, how are we going to have a high price uh, of carbon in China? How are we going to not just double it or triple it? How are we going to get it maybe 10 times above that $10 uh, baseline where they're starting at to really drive the innovation in the sector of reducing pollution? And then how are we going to move those monies that get created in that marketplace towards driving the growth, the dynamic growth of renewable energy, solar and wind, which China is, again, leading the world in, but could do so much, much, much more. How long before we're able to actually measure China's performance versus, let's say, Europe's? I think we'll be able to measure it really quickly. Uh, right now, I think it's already sort of the, the, the preliminary baselines are already there. We don't have a lot of liquidity in the marketplace. The Chinese are seeking partners. That's why they're in conversations with California, with Europe, to get liquidity into the marketplace. A lot of people are skeptical of this. The largest banks on earth left the European emissions trading system uh, years ago. They haven't actively engaged in the California system. So a lot of the capital is skittish on this because they don't see the large you know, uh, sort of steps that need to be to be moved forward happening in those marketplaces. All righty. Well, Michael Dorsey, we certainly appreciate you joining us on this very important topic. Thank you for your time. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you, Susan.